So what's happening? How have you been? It's been a week. It seems like it's been longer though. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Tiege Hanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number 23. Oh, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> Things are not moving fast enough for me. Um, I don't think they're moving fast enough for any of us. You know, we wanted, we, first off, when we got into this, Rob Kelly, um, the chemist and I, we didn't know exactly what to expect in terms of duration or how long it takes to actually make custom products. Um, and so we were sort of like, eh, it'll probably, take. we thought we could launch whenever we wanted to and that there was a, a quicker turnaround. And that unfortunately is not the reality. Um, we're still a few weeks, probably a few more than a few, um, a few weeks from launch, official launch. There are all the little pieces that are coming together and we're working on stuff like the website, give you an update. Website is looking incredible. We actually pulled back and decided to change a few things because there were some things, design elements to the website that we weren't all 100% nuts about. And so, you know, the way that we figure this, you only have one chance to launch and it better be right. And so all of our collateral, all of our web properties, everything needs to look incredible. Now, I will tell you this, we do actually, we have actually received the proof of our packaging. Um, they were sent to us for us to approve before they actually make a crap ton of these things with all the words and ingredients and everything printed on them. And it was so incredible to actually see, hold, feel, and look at this packaging. It's going, talk about high end looking and feeling. There is nothing that I've ever seen that looks as good and as sexy as the packages that you helped us actually pick. Um, because that's one of the things we sent you guys questionnaires and said, Hey, what packaging do you like best? We ended up going with the matte black packaging with the gloss cap and the gloss logo. And guys, I'm here to tell you that it is so sexy. Um, it is ridiculous. And that's something that is a big win and really exciting. The unexciting thing is that it does take a while for these packages to be made and shipped over to us here. Um, <sighs> Man, nothing happens as fast as I would like it. But sometimes you just gotta take it easy and understand that there are some other things that need to be done in order to keep everything moving. Um, so the ball is rolling and we are getting closer. Each week a little closer to launch. So hang tight. Today though, we're answering your questions. Question number one comes from Orb Goblin. Aaron, where should you be at financially before you decide to take those first steps in turning an idea into a product? Do you need to be debt free? Should you have some money saved up to start, like maybe $50,000? What point do you need to be at before you can really consider taking the next step? Ooh, this is a great question. And Unfortunately, the answer is going to be, it depends. There is no, like, you need X, Y, and Z in order to do whatever. Um, one thing I will tell you is that for this, for any business that I get into now, um, I don't want to have any debt on anything I do. Now, the good news is that nothing I do is that capital intensive in terms of the need for capital upfront in order to, you know, launch a lot of the things that I do are internet based and so the cost and entry point is low but that being said the this the Tiege Hanley um, startup is actually the most expensive thing that I've ever done now like I talked about in some of these other blogs um, Kelly is actually the guy who is bringing the financing to the table um, all of us the chemist Rob Kelly and I we all have the you know, our responsibilities. And one of the things that Kelly is responsible for is the financing and funding. Um, and so, you know, for this, we're looking at just to get, and I'm just going to be honest with you guys, because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and I don't know if this is too much information, but whatever, it's my vlog. So I'm going to talk about it. To launch, to get Tiege Hanley, like the first, like, okay, we're shipping it out. Honest to God, it's going to cost about a quarter million dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, but that doesn't mean that you starting a business need to save up quarter million dollars or get a quarter million dollars in funding in order to start it. A lot of times you can do things small. You can start small. I did a video all about one of the vlogs actually, 
all about the funding and financing in your different options. That's going to be listed and linked down in the description, but really it depends. I would recommend don't spend money if you don't need to. If it requires you to take a little bit of time, save up cash, that might be a great option. But a lot of times, you know, if you're working a nine to five job and you've got other responsibilities, to try and save up $25,000, $10,000 even, that could take years. And so if you don't have years to wait, a lot of times it's best to just figure out and, and come up with a way, take a loan, raise capital, raise money, go on Shark Tank, whatever you need to do in order to make that dream a reality. Um, because honestly, it's never going to be perfect timing. You're never going to have enough probably. And so you just need to do the best you, job you can and keep your expenses as low as possible. You can always start things cheaper unless you're trying to like build a car and then you got to spend like zillions of dollars. But wonderful question. You know what else is a good question? Number two from Louis Serrano. For the launch, will the amount of product we can purchase be limited to one of each kind or will be, we be able to buy more? Blech, getting tongue twisted. I want to know if I could buy one for myself and one for a close front. I can't, friend, see, I can't wait till the day I can have Tish Hanley in my hands. Lewis, we can't wait until you have Tish Hanley. I can't wait until I have Tish Hanley in my hands. Um, in terms of the amount, we're buying a lot of product. Um, and so what I would recommend is actually tell your friend about it and uh, have him come check it out and see what it's all about. There are some nuances to the way that we're going to be selling and presenting and shipping Tiege Hanley to you guys. I'll get into that a little bit more when we get a little bit closer to launch, but that's part of our like value proposition. Um, but it is, here, I'll tell you this. I'm starting to tell like close friends and family members and some of my associates a little bit about what we're doing. Um, you know, I've got some great vlogger friends that I interact with, that I network with, and I'm telling them sort of what we're doing and how much we're going to be charging and sort of how, and people like are freaking. And so we know that we're on to something like amazing. And we seriously, when I say that we want to change men's skincare, we are going to change the face, pun intended, of men's skincare. But great question. Red Eagle 1516 says, how do you go about getting a factory to produce, package, ship your product? This is the one thing that I can't figure out how to do when it comes to starting a business, thanks. All right, so Red Eagle has a great question, um, but there are kind of two different things going on in one question. He's asking where we go or how we go about finding somebody to produce, manufacture, and ship. They're kind of separate things. There's produce and manufacture, that's one. Shipping usually is not the same people that manufacture produce a specific product. A lot of times they produce it, they ship it to you, you sh the distribution center, Amazon, whatever it is, and they do the distribution. So they are two separate things. In terms of how you go about finding um, a manufacturer, you just, uh, internet <laughs> is one way. Um, we at Teach Hanley are using what is called a contract manufacturer um, where we actually have hired a company to sort of manage the, almost act as like a project manager. They have connected the packaging, the, the lab, the, they're somebody that can help you. Now the downside to doing that is it's sort of like a general contractor for building a house. They're going to get all the subs, somebody to do the drywall, somebody to do the roof, somebody to do the electric. They make everything happen and come together. So it takes a lot of work off of your time managing and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you may want to just do some more time or spend some more time researching and trying to find a, a company that will manufacture or that is a sort of that middleman type of thing like I was talking about. Tyler Amos asks, hey Aaron, do you ever read personal development entrepreneurship books? What are some of your all time favorites? <laughs> ah boy. So here's the deal. Um, and this is just me being honest with you guys. I don't spend a lot of time reading like self-help books or entrepreneur books. It's, I am too busy, honestly, like doing and being and trying to live it. 
that I don't spend a whole lot of time. Now, I will say that I do watch a lot of TED Talks. Um, when I'm doing cardio, when I'm, when I'm on a treadmill, I like being entertained and occupied. And that's a great time for me to catch up on, so not just catch up, but just TED Talks. I get inspired by them. I think that's kind of the point of them. Um, and there is one guy in particular that I would highly recommend you check out. His name is Simon Senek. Sene, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but he talks all about leadership. And he's got this one, start with why. He's just my, like, my, my Yoda in terms of management and leadership. And I just really like the stuff that he has to say. But in terms of reading books and so, I, I don't. Um, I do a lot of writing. I write all my videos out, not these vlogs, but like my Alpha M videos. I'm really busy doing what I just absolutely love doing, which is creating, being an entrepreneur, and going after my, my hopes and my dreams. And so I am a bad, bad entrepreneur, um, and I don't actually read those books. So you wanted the answer? That is my honest answer. And the last question comes from Ulysses Perez. Now, to set this question up, I did a video where I was talking all about you know, when you tell people, you get a lot of feedback and that sometimes you're going to get constructive criticism, sometimes you're just going to get criticism, and they're both important. Hi, Aaron. Everything you say is very true. The constructive criticism is very important to be heard, but let's not forget also to be realistic about some ideas. What I mean by realistic, I mean realistic in specific brand or market. I'm not exactly sure what he means by brand or market, but you do need to be realistic about your idea. Um, and I use the Shark Tank analogy because it's one that I'm very familiar with. You know, when you have an idea, when you think of something, you always think it's like the best. Like, oh my God, this is the best pen in the history of pens. And wow, and yeah, I'd pay like $200 for it. And so I'm sure that everybody else will. And you need to be realistic because all your friends and family members that are around you are going to tell you, yes, baby, that is the best pen in the history of pens. It's amazing. I'd spend $800 for it. But the reality and the market and people may tell you something different. And so you need that, you need to be realistic, all right? And unfortunately, this is something that is very tough to do because when we think of something, when we get committed to something, we're behind it and we think it's genius. None of these entrepreneurs go on Shark Tank with thinking that these sharks are not going to absolutely fall in love and think it's the next greatest thing and give you a million dollars for 10%. It doesn't happen. And um, perfect example of this, I met a woman when I was filming the second episode of Shark Tank, which will be airing May 20th, so mark your calendars, and she had this product. She told me about it on the ride over from the airport to the hotel where we were staying. She told me about it, and I thought to myself, that is a really dumb idea. Who would ever? Why would you? What? And she thought it was the greatest thing in the world. So what happens? She goes into the shark tank and she gets absolutely obliterated. They hated her idea. They sent her packing and she was crying the next day on the way home on the plane. She was devastated because she wasn't realistic. Nobody told her, hey, your product's stupid. You need better friends. That's what I think. Anyway, I just got an email from her, which was sad, but not like, like mind-blowingly, like, like, oh, well, I never saw that happening. She's going out of business. And uh, that's sad. You know, I know why, because she, there isn't a demand. She created a product that there wasn't a demand for. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you absolutely need to be realistic. Guys, I think I've talked a lot for this vlog. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you guys have any questions, please, down in the comment section, let us know. We'll do another one of these in a few weeks. Also, if you haven't signed up to the Tiege website or the, to the Tiege mailing list, go to Tiege.com, make sure to make it happen. We're giving away samples for you guys to try. Not everybody, but so let, watch last week's video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You rock.